What's so special about salmon? Well, we eat them. Around the world, people eat over 250 billion pounds of seafood each year. Of that, almost 5 billion pounds in the United States. When it comes to salmon, the average American puts down about 2 pounds of it each year. But before we can bake, grill, fry, or nuke the cold-blooded aquatic vertebrates, we've got to fish them. In the Pacific Northwest, the fishing industry depends on salmon. Every year, salmon fishing generates more than a billion dollars of economic activity and supports thousands of jobs. Salmon fishing includes commercial fishing, which is the fishing that's done to supply fish to restaurants and grocery stores, and also recreational fishing, which includes tourism and just the weekend fishing that you or I might do. So how does nature work to produce all this food and industry? Here in the Pacific Northwest of the U.S. and in the rest of the world, Natural river systems provide the breeding grounds for the salmon we eventually put in our refrigerators, freezers, and bellies. Salmon have a remarkable and complex life cycle. They're born in clear, cold rivers where the young then migrate all the way down to the ocean, and then they return to the very same stream where they were born as adults to reproduce. Salmon have evolved to use every aquatic habitat in their watershed, starting in those small tributary streams, through the mainstream river, through lakes, through wetlands, through the estuaries, out into the open ocean, and then back home again. The more we learn about salmon, the more we understand their importance to the world. And feeding people may be the least they do. Salmon are a species that connect the oceans to the mountains. Scientists call them a keystone species because they hold the whole system together. Salmon move gravel in their spawning streams, their carcasses fertilize the surrounding forests, and at some point, more than 137 species will eat salmon eggs, salmon young, or salmon adults. And what goes in must come out. Salmon are also at the center of what you might call the poop loop, a more descriptive name for the ecosystem's nutrient cycle. When salmon die, bears, eagles, raccoons, and other animals feast on their carcasses. And after they digest those nutritious fish, they poop in the woods, effectively fertilizing the forest. So where you find strong salmon runs, you can also find strong and healthy forests. Thanks to the poop loop, the fish feed the animals. They, in turn, fertilize the forest, allowing those trees to grow bigger, stronger, and faster in a more productive ecosystem. Truly a keystone species, giving long after it's been gotten. So what can we do to make sure salmon are getting what they need to keep giving? The most important things we can do to save salmon are to protect and restore the natural habitats that they need to survive. Clean rivers, healthy forests, and a productive ocean. These young scientists in one of Washington's Puget Sound estuaries are helping nature stay productive by monitoring the health of this river system. Big flounder in there. And helping nature and salmon directly benefits us. By preserving the places salmon live, we ensure our sources of food, livelihood, and fun. It's a full circle of life in which we play a big role. Nature works hard, and that's why we must work hard for nature.